Welcome to the Early Educator Podcast. We talk about everything that you need when it comes to growing your business, overcoming obstacles, and making an impact on not only the children in your care, but to your community and your family. And my name is Blake. With me today to my right, we have Cinta. She's the Executive Director of Our Daily Bread, CACFP. And with me to the left, today we have a very special guest. We have Emily. Emily is the Kentucky Program Manager for Our Daily Bread, CACFP. And so, yeah, guys, how are you guys doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Yeah. Pretty yeah. well. Happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, as you guys can see, we're not in the, the normal setup we're normally in. Um, we're currently away just as a, 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 all like the leadership stuff like that. We're talking about just some of the, uh, you know, it's different things we want to do with the company. And so we're in a different setting today. And so, uh, yeah. Nice and homey. Feels good, you know. I'll need some s'mores and we'll be good. I, I thought that was a part of the segment. I thought we were doing s'mores. It, yeah. We'll add it. We'll add it in there. We'll that add it nice. for sure. That would be nice. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, but yeah today uh, we're talking about just um, policing regulation and, and some of like the new things that are happening within and just, um, and just ha- try to get a better grasp understanding of what it is and why it's so important just for like educators and um and so yeah we just want to talk about that today um and so yeah i guess the first question i'll ask um is what are some of the like the most recent policy changes or updates in the food program right now and how have these changes um impacted child care providers and some of like the children that they serve well before we get really deep into that i would like to say that um Emily is our, we, we have different, I've talked about in some of the other segments, how we have different chairpersons mm-hmm. for different parts of our organization. Mm-hmm. So before I, we talk about that, get deep into it, mm-hmm. Emily is our policy and regulation chairperson. And mm-hmm. so I think the importance of having um, a policy and regulation chairperson is to implement some of those changes and to keep up with changes that are going on um, within the uh, company organization um, as a whole to um, filter those policies down through the to the educators Mm -hmm. so they're in the know about policy and regulation and Mm -hmm. emily is a really really great at doing that as soon as policy comes out she filters that policy to us within the organization and even just as importantly to the educators. Mm. Absolutely. Um, So some of the major changes that we've seen here recently is that the new income eligibility guidelines actually got released in February. Mm -hmm. So these are for the new fiscal year. So they will not go into effect until July 1st, 2023. Mm. Um, But the positive things that I have noticed about these new guidelines is that the um, rates for the household has increased about three to five thousand dollars meaning that especially for our daycare centers they're able to um, have their kiddos qualify as a free or reduced rate um better um so for example our for-profit centers right have to meet that 25 percent free and reduced in order to qualify to claim on the cacfb with these changing and those um, numbers increasing, this is giving the opportunity for those families to hit that free or reduced mark um, and also increasing the reimbursement for educators too. Um, mm. We know the cost of food is mm. insane right mm. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so any positive change that we see come from the USDA is a win for our educators. Um, so this is putting more reimbursement into our educators' pocket to buy those healthy and affordable meals for their kiddos and adults in care. Um, mm. So super awesome. Um, one thing that is also changing, um, as you guys may be aware, the Keep Kids Fed Act had passed last year. That is set to expire July 1st, 2023. One of the things for that was that all of our um, daycare homes automatically qualified as a Mm -hmm. tier one rate, which was fantastic. Super excited about that. But it's important for our educators to know that that bill, unfortunately, does have an expiration date and will be expiring Mm. um, at the start of the new fiscal year, so July 1st, 2023. Um, so we just want to make sure everyone is aware of that. Um, we definitely will work with our educators to see if we can continue to keep them at that tier one rate. 
based on their census or school data. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are some updates that we've seen come across here recently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if they have question about that or not sure about that in any way, mm-hmm. we are definitely here for them to call us, for them to um, call. And if they're on our program, for them to call us, for um, call their program manager. If they're not on our program, call us, mm-hmm. inquire for our Daily Bird CACFP. We definitely will keep them in the know in, in anything that uh, they need to know about mm-hmm. the food program, about regulations, mm-hmm about them even inquiring about being on the food program. Mm-hmm. Definitely mm-hmm. give them information. A hundred percent. I, <laughs> I tell my educators the same thing. Like there's no such thing as like a silly question, no. even though you're like, oh, I'm bothering like stuff. It's not like that. I promise. Like I would rather you ask me a million questions yes. than be out of compliance. Absolutely. Um, that is our goal as a sponsor for our educators. We are here to guide you and make sure you're successful in the food program. Mm-hmm. So please ask all the questions. Yes. Ask them, ask them. For sure. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So with with like all like the you know reg- regulations and stuff, it, I know it's a, it can be a lot to deal with and, mm-hmm. and all that. And so like, um, you have any any tips or suggestions on on how they can kind of like navigate with these regulations and requirements, um, and then also um, resources. Like, what kind of resources are available? You know, or that you guys can think of. Resources in reference to the regulations, things of that sort. Um, uh, yeah, like places they can go to to get good information, or or, or for example, I know like with with our daily bread, they can always contact us and we can help them mm-hmm. with that mm-hmm. and. And so things like that. I will say um, another great resource, too, is our website. So we have Mm -hmm. a lot of resources on there, like backlogged training webinars that go over all of the requirements of the CACFP. So we talk Mm -hmm. about, you know, paperwork compliance, um, meal pattern uh, compliance. So you can go back to those webinars and re-watch them right um and those are also great too for like new staff members that are coming on at your program that you're like okay you're going to help me out with food program guidelines and you know staying in regulation go watch you know these videos reach out to your field rep ask your field rep to come and train that new um director or assistant um so Mm -hmm. they're familiar with the CACFP um those are those are great resources and Again, like I said before, Our Daily Bread is here to support our educators. So we are the greatest resources. Like, <laughs> we know all of the policies. We're in those USDA handbooks, those state handbooks. Mm-hmm. So we're able to pull any um, knowledge that they need to know to stay in compliance. Most mm-hmm. definitely. That's what I was going to say. ODB at CACFP.org. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Plug>. ODB <laughs> at CACFP.org. I was also going to say, too, um, we have a multitude of trainings that we offer there on yes. our website. And this upcoming year, we will be we will outroll our trainings mm-hmm. that we are getting ready to have mm-hmm. for this year. And um, we have them in different parts of the state of Tennessee, as well as different parts of the state of Kentucky. So you can go to our website and see Mm -hmm. those trainings that we will have in this upcoming year. Our first training will be... Um, I believe I the first one is in April. April. Mm-hmm. Our first training is in April. We'll have trainings thereafter. And these are um, in-person, face-to-face trainings, as mm-hmm. well as the trainings that we'll have that are available mm-hmm. on our website. And okay. Tinta, why do you think it's so important to, like, attend an in-person training? Well, because you get that up and personal con, You get that in-person contact mm-hmm. with yeah. other educators um, which we have not had in years <laughs> right. yes. uh, because of the C word. We don't use that don't word in our C organization word. anymore as an excuse. <laughs> but um, and you also get, um, I think the um, up in personal training mm-hmm. is so important because you can ask the questions mm-hmm. and you can ask the questions through the other webinars, right. the webinars that you have, but you can ask those questions, get those answers, um, get those questions answered mm-hmm. that you might not be able to do if you do a webinar and right. it's um, a stagnant webinar. Right. Yeah. So um, that's why I think it's so important. And mm-hmm. um, just the face to face, you know, that we Great. have not had in years. So why would you say it's important? I would agree with you like 100% because also you're around other educators as well. Like it's mm-hmm. not just you, um, you know, behind a screen watching a webinar or not just you like one-on-one with your field representative, which is great. Still mm-hmm. getting that same knowledge, that same training, 
But when you're around your other peers, you know, you can also swap things that have been successful for your child care center or your daycare home. Like this recipe, mm -hmm. oh, my kids love this mac and cheese recipe. It's a hit. It's hitting my um, bread component and my meat component. It's great. It's amazing. Here's a recipe for it. You know, you're able to have that interaction with other folks too, as well as yeah. our daily bread. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, some good points, yeah, for sure, of the in-person mm -hmm. trainings. So, and the, of course, we know, so with regulations and stuff, there's there's a lot that goes into it, just mm -hmm. a lot of different things you got to follow. And so, I don't know, if it, is it looking at it in, through educator's shoes, I can see how you can just be like, you know, it may not be for me. Like, right. may I just, just need to just yeah. not worry about it. Or, you know, you know, this whole thing with milk, maybe I just let this slide, or I don't see the point because... You know, if we don't use all the milk, we got to just pour it on the drain. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what is, why why are regulations and stuff so important? Like what what kind of a difference does it make when it comes, when from not following all the rules to being able to like really follow all the guidelines? Like like what, what kind of difference can it make to actually put in that extra work to make sure that you're compliance? What you just said is a common thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you said, if you don't use all the milk, <laughs> you got to pour it down the drain. Milk is such a big thing, 100%. a huge thing. And you talk about not following all the rules versus following all the rules. A regulation is just that. When you join the food program and you decide, I want to do this, the number one thing, and we talk about this every day probably mm -hmm. in our program with our daily bread CCFP is for the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you follow all the rules is for the children mm -hmm. is because them getting the nutritious meals that they deserve is why you follow the rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you join the food program, you agree that you are going to give them the nutritious meals that they deserve. That's why you follow the rules. And the rules are that they receive these certain meal components. Mm -hmm. So that's the rule is that we give them these five meal components in a day mm -hmm. for lunch and dinner, right. certain meal components for certain meals. That's why we follow the rules. That's why we do everything we do. The USDA has set a certain standard and we follow it. Mm -hmm. And so when you join, that's why you follow the rules for the kids. That would that would be this. That is what I would say to any educator. You follow the rules for the children. Mm -hmm. And not only do you do that, there's a bonus is that you get reimbursed for the nutritious meals that we get to. Right. We get to do this. And mm -hmm. I, I've, I say that to my team. Mm -hmm. We get to do this for the children. That's why mm -hmm. we follow the rules. Mm -hmm. Agree. Like a hundred percent. And on top of that, Senta and I both have discussed this before for Tennessee and for Kentucky licensed facilities. They have to follow CACFP meal pattern guidelines regardless. Um, I think that came out about a year and a half ago for Kentucky. Um, mm -hmm. And if you are licensed, you have to follow them. It's mm -hmm. in your licensing handbook. Mm -hmm. So what I always say is you have to follow them anyways. Why not get paid for it? Um, yeah. Now you'll get reimbursed for those healthy meals that you're serving to those children and those adults. Like, so why not just follow? Um, and I get it. It is a lot. I understand mm -hmm. that the regulation is a lot to digest, especially if you're a brand new educator, just got on the program. Mm -hmm. And now we're saying all these things like child nutrition labels and follow this and follow that. It is very overwhelming. But that is also the great benefit of partnering with Our Daily Bread, if you are in Tennessee or Kentucky, is because we're help, here to help guide you to make sure you're staying in compliance. And I would highly suggest that for anyone who is not in Tennessee or Kentucky, like being sponsored is just so important, in my opinion, because you have someone there to make sure you're staying in compliance, like I said before. But it's just very important to make sure, like Santa said, you're following those guidelines because they were set forth for a reason um, and mm -hmm. you are getting these funds back for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, um, that's basically everything that I wanted to ask for regulations. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to mention about um, 
regulation or anything like that. I just want to piggyback off what Emily said is yeah. as far as a sponsorship and having a sponsoring organization to sponsor you as you go through a, you know, food program or you decide to have a food program, you know, join a food program. Mm-hmm. Um, it is very important that you do. You follow the rules and, you know, it in support of a food program. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. You do have so many other parts to um, your childcare facility. We know there's licensing. We know there's um, uh, CCRNR. We know there's so many other things. We know certificate program. Um, But in this whole entire journey, we are here to walk through it with you, Mm -hmm. to assist you in rules, regulations, Mm -hmm. things you have to do, all these additional things. And us being a part of that with you, we love to support you in your child care facility, rules, regulations, guidelines. Um, That's what we do Mm -hmm. as a food program is support you in that journey. So Mm -hmm. um, we love what we do. Yeah. Uh, We love children. Mm -hmm. And so... Thank you so much for all you do in support of the children as a child care provider. 100%. And yeah. especially know right now, like turnover is real. Um, it mm-hmm. is very, very real. And so the fact that you're even wanting to serve these healthy meals, like it says so much about your like character and your, um, you know, empathy towards these kiddos and making sure that they're getting a nutritious meal while they're in your care. Yeah. And that is just so incredible. So just, Say exactly what Santa said. Thank you. We just appreciate you so much for even like doing that. Um, I have such great conversations with educators and it just warms my heart every time because I'm just like, this is amazing. Like, this is why I love my job is because you uh, amazing educators are doing what you love and you're supporting your kiddos. And in return, we just all win. So it's just great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We all win. Yeah, that's that's definitely the, the main bottom line there all of us winning for sure but yeah um but yeah well thank you guys for coming and, and being a part thank of you. this emmy thank you for for dropping in and sure. and talking about this with us um but yeah thank you guys for watching um hope this benefits you all um and sure to remind you too if you're watch wherever you're watching from we are on um youtube we're also on spotify and on um and apple Podcasts. so you can find us there and watch you know other episodes And um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here today. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode. All right. Have a good one.